All right, today we're talking about a new form of communication in Call of Duty that you might not have heard of before, but it's a really effective way to actually work with a teammate specifically and really gonna improve your comms that can develop this habit in game. So what I'm talking about here is small talk. So you may have heard on streams or videos of players talking about other players having really good small talk. So I wanna really break down what this actually is. So when they talk about that, it really means uh, that that player is really good at communicating specifically with one other player on the fly and they're really giving directions or commands to another player, not entirely to the full team, but rather than just one other player so that they can work off of them well and they can have a good two-man setup. So in this specific video, I wanna detail what it looks like and give you some examples of real life pro comms. Specifically, we're gonna be looking at Shotzi because I think he has one of the best small talk comms in the entire league. So let's get right into it. So before we get into the actual pro comms, I wanna detail what it looks like and draw it out for you guys uh, so you can really get a good grasp of it before you start hearing the comms themselves. So again, when you're small talking, you're talking specifically to you know one other person so that you can work off of him. Let's say we're talking about P4 over here on Hydra. So a big part of holding this hill was the crosses that you can create. You know, we talked about the X cross yesterday, but this is an example of what you could do in terms of small talk. So let's say you're the one capping the point, playing the hill, and you're watching uh, this entire P2 cross for your team, making sure that anyone that's taking that type of route, you at least get info on them. Maybe you get some shots off too. But what you need is to make sure that your castle is completely covered by a teammate. So so you're gonna have some comms where you can specifically direct a teammate that's next to you and say to them or direct them, you know, pick up my castle, pick up my broken, I'm, I have your P2 cross. So that's a specific example of some small talk where you're just working off one other player who might be anchoring in the back over here and you're just communicating them directly to him, not the entire team. You know that there's already a person anchoring. You wanna be making sure that he's watching uh, your castle or broken, whatever you wanna call it, rather than the outside water over here because you might know from either audio cues or from tendencies or from just knowing that the players could be in that specific position, uh, that you need that cover for you to be alive in this situation. Because if they just run out on the castle over here, kill you for free, it's just gonna be an easy break for them. So you can see why in holds, why this type of communication is really important because you know you really wanna be directing if you have that information because giving direction really sets a tone for the communication and you can start working off of teammates better if you start telling them what to do, if you have the knowledge to do so. So an example in like a breaking situation would be, let's say we're just, you know, breaking into P5 over here. We're breaking from the front. We're coming this way. Let's say you're working with a teammate and let's say you're that sub player. You're working with an AR player. You know, it doesn't always have to be SMGs and SMGs. It can be whatever role, just whoever is around you during that time and you want to work with them. So let's say you're that sub player and you want to be hitting out this hill with the AR. You can say, you know, I'll bait for you. And then you count together three, two, one, make sure that you slide in first. He gets your trade. And then you have some type of breaking opportunity on the hill with some coordination. So giving direction that way and actually count Counting down, you know, three, two, one is such a better way of going about it rather than just, you know, child this with me because giving that actual timetable of when you're going to go is so important and so key for those type of situations because they know exactly when you're going to be starting to child. So those are just some simple examples of what you can do in terms of small talk. And let's get into the pro examples using Shotzi as a really good example in our communication. All right, so we'll pick up the comms from here. This is the major three tournament versus Atlanta phase. Uh, we're actually up pretty big in this Fortress Hardpoint, but it's actually a really, really good list in so let's take a look inside of it with Optic Texas. all right first things first you back up you back i can snake this so he's talking specifically with brandon in this situation because they're the two ones near the hill so obviously shati is going to be one capping the hill he's going to be making sure that brandon plays the back so that he can snake this watch his side door and watch his front for him because you know we already have two down so they have to salvage this in some type of way so that's good small talk because again he's giving that direction to brandon Brandon in the situation. So it's just him and Brandon working together and they make a two man setup based on those last two alive. So they're trying to work some type of setups to salvage this type of situation when we know we're already gonna be spawn in the back, but we don't know how quick they are into actually getting onto the hill. So they're just trying to salvage it with some type of two man setup. All right, this is actually really good small talk from Dan. And he's saying, I have bottom mark, you look the deep, look the deep. So again, he's talking with Brandon in this situation and he's saying, you know, look at my deep cross and for anyone that might be pushing through P1 this way while he himself is on this 18 and he's watching bottom mark. So he's making sure that his right side is covered in case anyone comes from this right side over here by making sure that he's communicating with Brandon and giving that direction to him. So once again, it's kind of like an X cross in this situation. It doesn't really look like an X, but the actual on the fly setup works like an X cross. So it really works that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
All right, so you hear that once again, a communication by Ant specifically talking to Dan saying you might have to back up because he knows going into this P3, we need to be staying alive so that we don't spawn out back P2 over here, especially when they're already breaking on into those last few seconds. So in case FaZe starts hitting out through P2, trying to trade at least one more kill, you know, that could cause Dan to spawn out. And then that means that Atlanta FaZe already has some direct lines into the breaking the new hill while we're already spawning out. So they're going to have some numbers in that situation. And in a 200 to Ford 84 type game, you know, all you need to do is really just hold this next hill and you completely win. So they need to break on into this hill for their win condition. You hear that? Stay on the rails box, Dan. He's talking, communicating with Dan specifically once again. So he's directing in this situation what he needs to stay alive because he knows in this situation he only dies from top maps if this person comes out, chows him right away while he's trying to look through gate. I give her a middle of the mother. I'm taking a mid. I I hear that Dan play for my fruit so he knows that he needs TV to be watched in order to stay alive in this situation so this is a situation where p5 has just ended we're trying to hold p6 so we are trying to stuff any push that might be coming through the kitchen side on anyone that may be hitting through old trying to get these back spawns so the idea from this is ant wants Dan to play his fruit and what we called fruit was uh, this little heady where actually it wasn't even fruit it was lettuce and tomatoes but uh, we called it fruit and this was a heady that he could use to watch uh, the cat room. So Ant realizes the only way he can die is if someone pushes through TV like this, chows him like this, and they kill him and somebody else that might be in the kitchen, and then they start breaking on in through that side. So he wants uh, his cat room to be watched this way uh, by someone using this heady right over here. So again, two man setup. He's trying to work with Dan in this setup so that they can completely hold this kitchen side and then work the hold from there after that. Bro, they're playing through left. Yeah, we're fine. We're fine. Dude, I freeze just it. keep holding middle, Kyler. You're good. Yeah, yeah, I got that. All right. Again, this is actually Dan in this situation. He's talking with Kyler. You know, just keep holding mid Kyler. We're good. So he knows that our setup is good right now. And he's just communicating with Kyler. Just keep watching what you're doing. We are completely controlled in this situation. And we have everything. All right, so the video keeps on freezing in the VOD, but what you hear is Ant talking to Dan saying, you know, move on right, I got this, we're, we're good, because he knows that, you know, we stuffed that first initial push towards this left side. You know, after 10 seconds, if they've only killed one guy, they don't see any other information, it means that NYSL is working somewhere else on the map. So he knows that once we get these first two kills, then they can direct their attention elsewhere because they know that they're not going to try and go through kitchen once again just because of the spawns on this hill. Hill. There's no way that they're going to hit through old, go through P5 once again after doing that the first time. So he's saying, you know, go towards the right side, help out through mid or help out through the top ed because he can have this side on lockdown. And if they want to chow him uh, inside kitchen, then they can play for that as well. But the probabilities are that they're not going to go there once again. He said backstairs, span in, chowing it. You know, I don't really know if that's super small talk because Ant's already dead. It's not really they're holding their setup. He's just giving that initial calm to to Brandon because he knows 100% fact that Skies is backstairs here. So you could say it's small talk, but it's mainly just, you know, a good calm in general. All right, so this is once again Ant trying to help out Brandon. Ant is on this catwalk and he's flanking, trying to help out onto the hill, get anyone that might be pushing through this glass stairs area. So he's calling out to Brandon. He says, I have your help because he knows that in a few seconds he's going to get some kills in the top bedroom or towards glass. So he's making sure that he knows, you know, one might be glass, but he has your help in a second. Unfortunately, the comp from Ant is too late and he's not able to get that cross for him in that time. And Paco's able to get the kill on Brandon from glass and breaks on into the hill. Here he goes, look at my backstairs again. They broke these last few seconds on hill. We're starting to work towards this P1 area, but we know that we can hold this last few seconds of scrap. So if this person that's a top cat can watch over towards his backstairs, they might be able to get a free kill and then work uh, this area of the map and start breaking onto the P1 from that side as well. So really taking all those angles going into that P1, but making sure that you had that scrap time. It's not a bad play to actually hit scrap on this hill because of the way that P1 works on this map. Yeah. He's back here, back here, sir. Okay, I, 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 I,
Unfortunately, though, he does die here. We do end up getting the trade, but he assumed that he had some help over him. Uh, so he chopped just a little bit too quickly. But you see the idea of what we're talking about here when we're talking about small talk. You're directly talking to one person, making sure you're either directing something or coordinating with them. You know, coordination is such a huge thing when you're talking specifically to one other player on the team. So, you know, macro communication is really important, but also just working specifically with one teammate can go such a long way. And in my opinion, you know, small talk, a good small talk player can turn mediocre comms into good comms or good comms into great comms based on how you do it because of how well it can be executed so once again you know the basics of small talk making sure you're giving that direction giving that coordination so that your teammates can actually work off of you it makes their job so much easier if you're actually able to do it effectively and it just makes the entire team more cohesive in general so if you're able to do it you know it's going to take a lot of reps to actually work on this because it is an advanced type of comm but if you are duo queuing with another player you know that's a really easy way to start getting used to it because if you want to be playing around one other player, whether you be your friend or someone you're just queuing with, it's a really easy way to start working together with just one specific teammate rather than the entire team if you don't have access to communicating with them. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for making it to the end of the video and I hope you guys learned something new. I'll see you guys in the next one.